Um, okay, let's move forward, guys. I want to cover today one of the most important questions I think you can ask a client when you're meeting them in person or when you're having like a conversation with them over the phone um, or when you're going to do a consultation with them or when you go out and show a property is one of the most important questions that you can ask. And it can be this, you know, it doesn't have to be this exact question, but somewhere along the lines of this, it's either asking the client, what's most important to you, you know, when you buy a home or when you sell your home, depending on what situation you're in, what's most important to you? Or what are some of the questions that you have that you would like me to cover, you know, through my presentation, right? Or when we go out and see homes, you know, what are some of the most important questions that you have that you want to make sure we cover? This is something that I want to add to your guys' arsenal to make sure you guys are asking this important question. Because what that's going to do, guys, it's going to allow the client to open up and it's going to give you pretty much the answer or like the things that you need to focus on, right? Because in sales, if we're talking about things that don't mean anything to the client, like let's say, for example, you have a client that's, you know, they're really concerned with, you know, the finance and the interest rate and what they can afford and all that stuff. And you're just talking about how good of a neighborhood it is and why this is a great neighborhood and this is a great neighborhood and great schools and, you know, all this stuff. But that's not really their concern. Their concern is more of the finances and more of like all that stuff. And you're not answering that question. There's going to be a disconnect there, right? Even though it is important information to talk about the neighborhood and the schools and all that good stuff. But if you're not speaking and hitting the points that are painful for the client, then you're going to miss an opportunity to, to connect with them and win them over and build credibility. You guys follow me there? Um, have you guys ever come across a situation where, I don't know, you go maybe to a store, you go to buy a car, you go to some sort of sales environment and you got the salesperson just spitting a bunch of stuff and just kind of going through their pitch and their script. And it's like, none of that stuff is really important to you. And like, you're just kind of, you just kind of tune out. Um, because they haven't answered what you really came Therefore, right? What you really want to hear. Like in car sales, for example, like they go to buy a car and they're just talking about, you know, how cheap this car is and like, hey, I'm going to get you a good deal. I'm, I'm going to get you the best price and the best price. And like, you're not really, you don't really care about the price. You want to make sure you get the car that you want. You want to make sure it has the features that you're looking for and you're willing to pay if they give you those features. The sales guy is only talking about the price. He's not, he's not going to effectively close you on moving forward with. So what I want to role play right now is. I want to role play just you having that dialogue with me. Like I'm the client and I just want to hear you, you know, for number one, be excited to meet with me and then ask me you know, let, let me know that, Hey, like my objective is to make sure that we answer all your questions and stuff like that. And before we get started with this, you know, presentation, let's say we're, here's a scenario. We're doing a zoom presentation, right? We're doing the, the buyer consult. Um, this is like the icebreaker. And before you get started, you want to want to break the ice. You want to welcome them. You're happy to see them. You're happy to meet with them. You want to sound excited. Um, you want to let them know what you're here to accomplish. And then you also want to address the fact that, Hey, I want to make sure my presentation is a great presentation. What are some of the things that are important to you? What are some of the questions that you absolutely need me to answer and cover? Uh, what are some of your concerns or what's most important to you when moving forward with this process? So that right there, what I just did is what we're going to role play right now. So who would like to volunteer so i can role play it on you i'll be the agent and then we'll pick you guys kind of going through that and saying that who wants to be my client right now 
Liliana. All right. So um, I just met with Liliana, right? We just booked the Zoom consult. We're on the Zoom consult, and this is how I'm going to break the ice. Hey, Liliana, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for showing up today. Uh, I know you're super busy, and uh, thanks for showing up on, to our Zoom consult. Um, like I told you over the phone, this is our opportunity to go over the buyer process and I'm gonna uh, my goal today is to really show you um, why we're a great you know team to work with why I'm a great agent to work with kind of go over some of our credibility walk you through the process and uh, give you some confidence when you're buying a home but what's really really important to me is making sure that I address any concerns that you might have so before I get started you know what sort of questions or what's most important to you in this process? What sort of things do you want to make sure that I cover in our presentation today? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm really excited to get started. I think my number one thing is I don't want to overpay for a house. Um, I know that it's I've been hearing that it's crazy. And although I, I do want to be a homeowner, I want to be cautious of that. So I don't know if there's like any tips that you can go over with me, maybe. Okay, awesome. So, so what I'm hearing is you want to make sure that, you know, you're worried about the market a little bit, right? You're probably seeing some yeah. of the changes and you want to make sure you don't overpay. And, uh, and, and it sound, at the end of the day, it sounds like you want to make sure you get the best deal, you know, for this current market. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. I also, I, I also want a nice house. <laughs> I don't know if that's something that I can accomplish. Okay. Okay, great. And, and then finding, you know, the nicest home you can you know, for your budget and stuff like that, making sure it meets all your criteria and all your needs, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, excellent. So so during our presentation, I'm gonna go over some of the tips and strategies that we use to get the best deal. And then we'll dive a little deeper into your criteria to make sure that we're only looking at homes that really match what you're looking for. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Okay, great, stop right there. So you see that guys, like that is how I would start my consultation. Because what I'm doing, number one, is I'm setting the stage, right? I'm setting number one, that I'm excited. I'm letting her know that I value her time, that I know she's busy, you know, and thank you for showing up. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm thanking her for showing up to our meeting. I'm letting her know that it's important to me, right? And it's important to me that we address any of the concerns that she might have. So I want to get those out on the table first before I start telling her a bunch of stuff and going through my whole pitch. I want to make sure that now that I know what's important to her, I'm going to make sure I put more energy and effort into hitting those points. You guys follow me? Give me a thumbs up if you follow me. Right? So now that I know that making sure she gets the best deal is important, I'm going to probably show her like, some of the opportunities that there are on the market right now. Maybe pull up like some of the homes that just recently uh, decreased their price, right? And I'm gonna say, hey, these are some opportunities right now and you're in the areas that you're looking in. This one just had a price drop, right? There may be an opportunity to go in there and negotiate better price and better terms and get you ultimately the best deal, which is what you're looking for. And then the second point was that she wants to make sure she gets a nice place, right? So I'm gonna start asking a little more questions about, hey, what's important to you? Um, in the property that you buy? What's your must haves? Are there things that you absolutely need? Are there things that you, you know, that you want, but you can, you know, compromise a little bit? Are there, are there things that's like, these are bottom line criteria, right? Because when I'm able to do that, now we're like locked in. Now Liliana as the client, she's going to know that I value what's important to her. She's going to, to know that I'm looking to make that I accomplish what she's looking for and it's all about her and what's important to her and and then I'm the person that's going to help get, get to where she wants to get to okay so now we're going to flip the script who would like to role play that little dialogue and just do what I just did who would like to take a shot at that
All right, Liliana can't raise her hand twice, guys. So this is your time to practice right now, right? This is your time to put yourself out there. And it's okay if you mess up, but you got to make the attempt and then we're going to coach you and then you'll try it again. And then we'll make sure, hey, you got that, you got it down, right? So I need someone else besides Liliana who would like to kind of just role play that real, real quick. I'm going to call on someone. Raise your hand if you've done a buyer console already. If you've been the one actually leading the, the console. Iris, have you done a buyer console yet? No, I've done it with seniors only. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to call on Connie then. Connie, let's go. Hello. Okay, Connie. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to role play that intro, right? Like we just jumped on the Zoom. The Zoom just turned on. I'm the client. I want you to tell me how excited you are to meet with me. I want you to tell me what the goal is of today's presentation. And I want you to ask me what's important to me so that you make sure that you cover it in the consultation. Okay, so this is before we, we start anything. This is at the beginning of the consultation. Um, okay. This is the icebreaker, right? This is the icebreaker, the beginning of the, of the buyer consultation. Okay. Hi, Enrique. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. You know, um, congratulations on taking that first step on becoming a first time home buyer. I know it's a really big step. Um, you know, before we get started, I really just kind of wanted to see, you know, what your goals are in terms of, you know, the entire process of looking for your next home, what kind of expectations you may have from me. Um, you know, I, I just kind of want to get a feel of how you're feeling right now. Yeah, Connie, thank you so much. Uh, um, honestly, I'm just a little nervous. You know, this is a big step for me. You know, I, I got pre-approved, you know, but I don't make a lot of money. So it's like, I'm really going to be like pushing myself, but I really want to buy a home. So I'm just really nervous about the process. I just want to make sure I'm making the right move and um, ultimately make sure I get a home that I can, you know, even if it's a fixer upper, because I know I don't have a big budget, like something that I that's in a good area that I can, you know, grow into if I got to remodel it over time, you know, so just finding the right home is also, you know, important. But overall, I just kind of kind of nervous, you know, just about taking the step. Yeah, absolutely. I totally understand where you're coming from. You know, purchasing your first home is really uh, going to be most people's um, largest purchase that they'll make until they make, you know, their next home purchase or, or whatnot. So the purpose of this consultation is really just educational to see if purchasing a home right now makes sense for you. And then also to go through the steps of purchasing that first home, what the current market looks like to tell you a little bit about myself as well as my team um, to make sure that, you know, this relationship is going to work out, that we work well together. Uh, and then if you have any questions along the way, you know, feel free to, to ask. Yeah. So. Okay, let's stop right there. Mm -hmm. Let's stop right there. Um, let's give Connie some feedback in the chat. What did she do good? Um, what's, what sort of critique would you give her as well? Give me the pros and the cons of Connie right now, and we're going to dissect it. What did you like? And then what do you think maybe she could have added? Lilian wrote, I love the energy and tone. Uh, Mauricio wrote, remember to repeat and approve. Uh, Antonio wrote, very concise. Blanca wrote, tone is great. Repeat and acknowledge concerns. Reassure they're in good hands with an experienced agent. Um, love the energy. Says Dewey. Come on, let's get everyone's participation. Everyone, this is, this Connie put herself out there on the chopping block right now for you guys to give her some, some criticism. Um, so your feedback is important because now Connie can take that and make adjustments to, you know, how she does her, her opening pitch. Love her tone. I like the way she leads friendly personality, lots of questions, repeat and approve. 
Okay. Uh, great energy and tone. I like the way you lead the combo. Um, okay. So let me, the consensus, Connie, is your tone and your energy, super calm, super relaxed, very friendly, very personal. I think you hit that like a 10 out of 10, uh, which is awesome. Um, very professional. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt comfortable you know like she wasn't like repairing like trying to sell me or anything like that it was very like hey I want to make sure that um we educate you I want to make sure we see if this is the right move for you uh I want to make sure I show you my credibility all those good things I think you you did a excellent job on how you explained you know what goal is of of the uh the consult and your tonality and all that stuff I think was great so Great job on that. Keep doing that. Where I think you can make some tweaks or some improvement is, is taking some time to get a little more in depth with my concerns, right? One of my concerns, and I said it multiple times, was that I'm nervous about the process. So if I'm nervous about the process and I want to make sure I also find the right home because I don't have a lot of budget, you have to stop and acknowledge that part, right? Like you have to empathize with me. You have to let me know, hey, I understand you're nervous, but then you have to reassure me, right? On why, like, like you know, this is, this is why we have to go through the buyer consultation. I want to make sure you're confident. I want to make sure you're educated so that you're not nervous. And I'm going to be here every step of the way to explain everything to you and make sure we hold your hand, walk you through the process. So you can put that nerve aside and, and leave it to us to, to hit your goals for you, right? So that's the part where, it takes a little more listening, a little, a little more just like, like, here's the thing is right for us, it's every day. This is an everyday thing, right? Like we're, we're talking to tons of clients. We're talking to tons of buyers, tons of leads. And for us, like after a while, it's like, it all sounds the same, but I think what you got to do is you got to put yourself in the position of the client and remember that this is a big freaking deal for a lot of people. And it's, in your, as you go through the business and you get exposed to a lot more transactions and a lot more people, it becomes less and less of a big deal for us as agents because it's just something we do every day, right? Think of it like if you're a brain surgeon, right? And you're just fresh out of, uh, fresh out of medical school and you're going to do your first brain surgery, like how would you feel? Like, fuck, Nervous. like if I, one wrong move. Nervous. <laughs> one wrong move and this pulls out, right? Like one wrong move and this guy's paralyzed, right? Or like yep. whatever it might be, you know? But when you're like 10 years in the game and you've done thousands of brain surgeries, it's like, ah, oh, I say I got three brain surgeries on the calendar today. Eh, not a big deal. Right? I'm not these three out. Then I'm going to go have a team golf, right? It's just different, right? But now think about it for the client. Think about it for the patient. I mean, the patient that has to go in and get brain surgery. How would you feel as a patient if you had to go in and get brain surgery? Very nervous because something can go wrong. This is a very this, nervous, this right? Been a, a big move for me personally. Yeah. Very nervous, right? So you got to remember like these clients that are buying their first home for them, it's like brain surgery sometimes. Like there's a lot of nerves, right? There's a lot of like unknowns. They don't know what's going on. They don't, the market is, you know, the news is saying all this crap and everything. And for them, it's a big deal, right? It's all their money's on the line, their life savings or a big portion of their, their money that they got in the bank, or they're pulling out money from their retirement to, to do a down payment. So the reason I'm, I'm spending more time on this, Connie, is because I, I want this to be helpful for everybody is we got to remember that it's important that we really empathize with the client and we really let them know like, hey, I understand. It's okay. Like, don't worry. That's why I'm here. You got to reassure them that like you're here to guide them. Mauricio, what do you got? Um, yeah, like what, I mean, my, my go-to response, um, just like you were saying, Enrique's everyone's super nervous, right? It's like the biggest move you'll probably ever make in your entire life. 
Um, so I always say, Hey, Enrique, listen, I know you're nervous, right? I have a lot of clients that are in your same shoes. When you, when you start looking for homes, you don't know what's going on, right? It's literally almost like learning a whole other language, but this is exactly why we're meeting today. I'm going to go over a lot of the things that you do need to know as a new home buyer and homeowner. That way, when we're actually in the process and in the trenches and doing the whole transaction, it's nothing new to you, right? You're at least more familiar with the process. Um, but, you know, that being said, let's definitely just jump into it. Ask any questions and feel free to stop me if you need me to repeat anything more than once. There you go, right? So, Connie, that's great advice, Mauricio. And you see, like, the way Mauricio explained it, it's like, all right, now I can, like, all right, Mauricio, like, thanks, man. Like, I'm really nervous, but that makes me feel a little bit better, you know? That makes me feel better about this process yeah. and the thing is like, um there's an old um sorry I'll, I'll be real quick go ahead the reason why i say i have a lot of clients in your shoes is because now they don't feel alone right they're like well it's normal for everyone to feel like this okay less pressure they're more concentrated okay now i can understand right yeah and here's the thing um for some of us that's not our natural personality right for some of us, we're more like just the get to the point. We're hard drivers. We're stuff like that. And that's how I am too. Like no, I'm, I could be like that, right? We're just like straight to the point. And sometimes I got to like take a step back and like, all right, I, you know, I got to get touchy feely a little bit. I got to get in tune with the, with the person's emotions, you know? So Connie, would you say you're a little more like straight to the point, like hard driver, like very matter of fact, or are you really more of like a, a feelings type of person? Um, I feel like I'm a little bit more matter of fact, but I can be personable too. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And, and I would agree. You said exactly what, what I thought you were going to say. I think naturally you're a little more matter of fact, but here's the thing. What's going to make you a better salesperson is number one, knowing that you're more matter of fact, right? Just by you saying that and knowing how you are, then you know what you have to do when you're in certain situations, right? So now that you know that, now you know that, hey, when I'm, when I'm dealing with the client, I really have to listen and read them so that I know if I got to be more matter of fact, depending on the personality, or I know I got to be more personable because this person is a little more you know, nervous or whatever it might be, or their, their personality is a little bit different and you got to try to match it and meet them in the middle somewhere. So this is exactly why we have these script and dialogue trainings, right? This is your chance to, to learn these things and then go out and deploy that on your next call. Maori, what do you got? Um, yeah, there was a training we did with when we were doing the Build Pipes 12-week training um, and it really helped me out with uh, knowing how to navigate different types of people, right? Some people are like, just give me the data. Don't waste my time. Some people are like, please hold my hand. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm scared. Um, but it's like the, it's like the disc test training. I don't remember. I know it's recorded and we have yeah. it in our, in our files, but that really, really helped me like, okay, now I got to switch gears and be more like them. Right. There's, there's clients are like, dude, like F this, F that, F you like, yeah, I'm mad with you, bro. Like, you know, and there's people like, <laughs> tell me what's going on. Or I need to check with my family first. Hey, Enrique, I love checking with my family before I make any decisions, right? Let's go and check. So it's things like that, right? Like you were saying, Enrique, um, being a salesman, you have to wear so many different hats, right? You could be good at, yep. you know, dealing with one certain type of person, but then, you know, you're missing on all the other business. That's you know, someone like you, Enrique, can just be boom, 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 different types. Get more business, things like that. But it really did help yeah. me out. I don't know which one it's called or what the label is, but it's the disc yeah. one where we did that. It really helped me. Yeah, it's, I'll find it. It's in the 12 week training. It's in our Slack. If you go into the, uh, the bill pipe sales velocity training, I'll find which week it is and I'll, I'll post it up at the end. But yeah, that was a good training that just focused strictly on like different personality types. Um, but that's the difference between you know, a, a novice salesperson and someone who's doing sales at a high level, right? Because they know how to adapt to each person, right? Um, and here's the thing too, is you may have a husband and wife who are totally different. 
Uh, Blanca, remember that client that we had? Um, Chris, what was his name? Chris, sold his home Chris, and- Chris. Chris, the husband was a, he was a driver. He was the alpha (laughs) and the The wife wife. was the sweetest person ever. And I think him and Enrique bumped heads. We went on that listing appointment together, but, um, it worked out. We made it worked out. He connected more with me and Enrique was just like a little more behind the scenes, but they were completely opposite. He was like driver, push, push, push. And she was more, I understand. I get the process. I see how it is. And we just kind of had to be the middle person. <laughs> I had to be the middle person. Yeah. He was more just results and results and like, yeah, he pushed my buttons a few times, but, uh, but we got it done, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and it, it worked out in the end. Okay. We, got a, um, we, we, we exceeded the expectation, got a great review, and it was more just learning to adapt to both of them, right? Not making anybody wrong or right and just adapting and, you know, doing what we needed to do. Like Maori said, kind of, you know, adapting yep. to every personality. Exactly. Um, Connie. Do you know, do you have a clear understanding right now of maybe what you can tweak in your, uh, in your pitch? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So now we're going to role play it again. Same scenario. Now what you've learned, I want you to implement that, right? So, all right. The Zoom just turned on. I'm your client. Go ahead. Hi, Enrique. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, I really appreciate your time um, and being able to to meet with us on this consult for today. Um, You know, before we started, I just wanted to get a sense of, you know, how you're feeling. I know that we're at the beginning of the process. We may not have any knowledge about, you know, first steps. Um, So I just kind of wanted to get a sense of, you know, what your, what you would like to expect out of this process, as well as um, any expectations that you might have from me at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, Connie. Thanks for meeting. You know, um, I guess I'm, I'm just a little nervous, you know, about the whole buying process. Like this is a big step for me. I've been saving up, you know, you know, for a few now, you're like working overtime and stuff like that. So, you know, this is kind of a big deal. It's going to be my first home. I've never bought, I've lived at home with my parents like all this time, but it, I need to get my place now, you know, I'm going to get married and, um, but I don't have a lot of money, you know, so I'm putting all my money into this house and um, I'm just a little nervous, you know, I want to make sure I'm making the right move and getting the best deal and, you know, making sure I'm getting a good property and stuff that, you know, I, you know, even if I got construction so I can always fix it up. So it doesn't have to be the nicest, but I want to make sure it's a, in a good area and stuff like that. So hoping we can, you know, figure something out. Yes, absolutely. I totally understand. Um, You know, I want to first off say congratulations. It sounds like you're getting married sometime soon. Um, That's a big step. And, you know, the next step is really the fact that you're even taking this first step to purchase your first home. I totally understand. You know, it's a big deal to be able to purchase your first home. It does require typically a lot of people's savings. And so I, I totally understand the nervous part. Um, you know, I have a lot of buyers who are in the same position as you. Uh, you know, it's their first step and really they kind of don't know where to start, but that's why we hop on these consults, right? To make sure that you feel educated, that you feel comfortable in this decision to move forward with your first time purchase. Um, we wanna make sure that you're well-educated, that you feel comfortable in your next position and that, you know, you have a, a professional at hand um, with any questions that you may have along the way to make sure that at any point you never feel like you're um, feeling just kind of up in the air during the entire process. Um, I'm here to hold your hand and, and, you know, answer any questions that you may have. Um, So during this consult, we'll, we'll go over what the current market conditions are, are like, as well as what the steps are going to be like. And then Uh, when purchasing your first home, make sure that it makes sense for you, go over a timeline right now. And um, throughout the entire thing, we'll make sure, you know, you have time to ask any questions. And then after this, we'll also send you a copy of our consultation to make sure that if you feel like we were either going a little fast, if you want to review it on your own time, um, then you you have the ability to do so. 
Guys, you see me smiling throughout this whole thing? Like, let's go. Let's give it up for Connie right there. Woo! You just get, I just got the chills right now. Like, that was, like, that was Connie. That was freaking awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right? Like, literally, this is why we do these freaking trainings right here, right? Because that little tweak, like, took Connie from doing a good job to doing a freaking amazing job, right? Like, how am I going to feel now as that client, right? I'm like, you had me on cloud nine. I'm like, all right, like, shoot, I don't feel nervous no more. Like, you hit all the points. You, like, made me feel really good about it. And I, I'm like, you just gave me a lot more confidence now and why I need to continue to move forward and, and buy a home right you guys agree all right everyone unmute yourself right now and just make some noise for connie real quick. Oh, connie. Good job, connie. Oh, connie. good job way to go thanks guys got this good all job, right connie. connie so going forward going forward right like listening right of course like you know the stuff like you're great Right, you're you're a great communicator. You have that gift, right? But being able to now listen and hit the points that were important to me, that's gonna change your freaking conversion like night and day. Right? Because now from there, you're just gonna keep you're gonna now it's gonna lead you to the next step, right? You're gonna make sure you hit those points through the consultation. I'm gonna feel comfortable, I'm gonna ask you questions, you're gonna go back and check in on me, right? And that's just gonna take you to a whole nother level. So those of you guys that just watched and witnessed that, right, I want you to make sure you're taking notes because that's exactly what you need to do, right? You need to give them your pitch. You need to tell them why you're here, what you're looking to accomplish, and then ask what's important to them. Fill them out. Hey, how are you feeling? What's important to you? Are there any things that are concerns for you before we get started that we make sure we talk about in the presentation? And then... I'm, they're going to tell you, yeah, these are my concerns, or this is what's important. And then you're just going to repeat back to them and say, hey, I totally understand. You know, these are important. And then here's how I'm going to address those concerns. But you see, by you asking the question of what's important to you, and how are you feeling about this, I now gave you the keys, basically, I gave you the cheat code on how to win me over. You guys understand that, right? When you ask that question, whether you're on a call, whether you're in person, whether you're at an open house, the person is now going to give you the cheat code on how to win them over. So I want you guys to make sure you are putting this in every single situation that you have. You can ask this at an open house. Hey, guys, welcome to the house. Hey, I want to show you around how long you guys been looking for. You're making chit chat. Awesome. How are you guys feeling about this process, right? Like, have you guys, you know, bought a home before, you know, you guys have any questions or concerns right now, you know, about the market or anything like that? Like, where, where can I help you out? So you can do that at an open house, right? You can do that on your console. You can go show a house. And while you're showing the home, you can ask that question. Hey, what's important to you guys in the home you buy? Can you see yourself living at this home? right? What would you improve, right? This is where you're starting to peel the onion back and they start giving you the answers, right? They're giving you the cheat code. And then you're able to tailor your dialogue because now you know what's important to them versus the opposite way is you're just spitting whatever you think is important and you may not be hitting the target because you don't, because that may not be what's important to them. And then you have a disconnect and that puts you further away from building rapport with someone right so the way you build rapport with someone which is probably the most important part of a, of a sales transaction is being in rapport and building trust is by asking the questions and addressing what is important to the client if i if, if there's one thing i can teach you guys or i can reiterate with you guys it's that exact thing you've got to ask the right questions so that you can give the right answers all right who wants to role play this now who's next we'll do what we got time for one more and then we're going to wrap up 
go, Diana. Diana, Iris. I want to see someone who, who's, who's trying to step up to the next level, right? Like, because some of you guys are watching, which is cool. But, like, really, this is your chance to step up, right? Um, sorry. <laughs> um, I can do it with you. Um, I had one consult. Um, Urban had a meeting, so I basically led it for half the consult. So I can try to see, you know, definitely places where I can improve. <laughs> Okay, okay, so here's so what here's we're going to do. We're going to switch it up. Switch it up. Mm -hmm. um, I think if Antonio's in the same room, have him mute his... his... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he... Yeah. You... Okay. Yeah, just mute your computer. So we're going to switch it up now. This is a different scenario. Now you're meeting me at the property for the first time. You got a Zillow Flex call. You booked the appointment to go see 123 Main Street. We're walking into the home. How are you going to greet me? And then you're going to give a script, right? You're going to give a similar script, you know, but now we're in the property. So maybe you want to ask more of like, hey, what's important to you when buying a home and what's important to you, you know, in the property that you buy and stuff like that, right? So this is more like it's an in-person type of deal versus a Zoom consultation. Okay. So let's, let's just pretend you open the door for me and you're welcoming me in, right? Okay. Hi, Enrique. How are you doing today? Hey, Julia. How's it going? It's going good. I'm so glad you can make it today. Um, so this is 123 Main Street. It is four bedrooms, three baths, 1,000, uh, sorry, 1,200 square feet. So come on in. So is this your first property or have you purchased a home before? Uh, no, this would be our first time. Actually, this is this is the first home we've looked at. You know, we just got pre-approved and, you know, we clicked on Zillow and then here we are, you know, meeting you at this property. Yeah, of course, buying your first home is may seem stressful to many people, but I'm here to make sure the process goes as smooth as possible. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask me. We can also schedule a call afterwards where we can go over the entire process um, from start to closing, just so that you're familiar and it doesn't seem too new to you. Um, and I can inform you on everything that this entails. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Awesome, so, so what is some must-haves you, you envision in your dream home? What are some things that you want to have in terms of schools? Uh, yeah, you know what? Honestly, we're, we're not too picky as long as it's, you know, semi-remodel. Like we don't want something that's a fixer upper. As long as it's, you know, a little bit updated, um, you know, that's important to us. Um, we don't need a lot. You know, we, we only need a small place. It's just me and, and, and my wife. We don't have any kids yet. Um, and then, you know, just making sure we get a good deal, you know, like, I don't know if there's opportunity to get a good deal right now. I know the, it looks like the market is changing. So that's, that's kind of what's, what's important to us. Yes, of course. So the market is changing a lot. We are seeing a lot of prices drop and a lot more room for negotiation, especially in this property. It has been on the market um, a bit longer than usual. It's been on the market for about 50 days. So there's definitely room to negotiate and um, see if we can get you a good good price. Okay, let's stop right there. Good job. Uh, give it up for Julia for volunteering. Putting yourself out there. Okay. Uh, um, I know that was kind of a little awkward. I just just threw that scenario at you. So it, it wasn't like straightforward, like Connie's. It was like, we're meeting in person. Maybe I Yeah, because I was like, that. I don't know how to describe but, uh, the house or anything. I was like, oh. But, but here's the thing. Here's what I, wanted, what I want you to take away is that even though I just threw that scenario, you rolled with it, right? And you kind of just did what you thought you should do. And, you know, you hit some of the good points of how you would have someone come in the house and you're telling them what the property is all about. And then you're kind of breaking the ice and, and going from there. So um, let's give Julia some feedback really quick, guys. In the comments, in the chat, uh, what did you like and what do you think she can improve upon?
in the chat. Give her some feedback. Jomo says she sounded engaging and welcoming. She asked appropriate questions and was informative. Um, repeat and acknowledge, congratulate him on starting the process, but your confidence is right on practice and you'll be solid. It was, it was good. Anybody else? What sort of feedback can you give Julia? Hello. Let's go guys. I need some participation, uh, friendly and helpful questions. We have and answers we get help us sell what they want the good she was welcoming position herself to be a pillar of information provided guidance in his journey confidence is good informative ask the client more questions to get them talking confident okay good stuff guys so repeat and approve also great explanation asking must have questions to understand the client more okay good good so yeah, number one is, um, I know, you know, you're, you're being put on the spot, right? So you may be, there may be some nerves or whatever as well, but um, I think number one is just welcoming, like your tone was great. You welcomed me. Um, I like how you immediately went to, hey, you know, welcome to one, two, three Main Street. You know, it's a four bed, two bath, 1200 square feet. You kind of went into that, just giving me some of the information. And then you offered like, hey, we can do a buyer consultation uh, after which was great. Um, and then I think you asked, uh, asked like, what are some of my must haves, right? Which was awesome, right? Asking the client, like, what are, their, what are the must haves, um, you know, that, that they're looking for in their property? So I think, I think those were all pretty solid. Um, who else wrote something? Listen to your concern, did a quick market update regarding inventory and opportunities to get better deals. I like how you told me, hey, this property has been on the market for 50 days, which is a little bit longer than normal. So there may be an opportunity to negotiate on the price, right? Because that was one of my concerns is making sure we get a good price. Um, so I think overall it was solid. Um, what I would do is just... Uh, I think the more that you do this, the more it's just going to come natural and, and you're not going to have to like think, you know, it'll just come off a lot smoother. So I don't, I don't really think there was anything I would necessarily change. Maybe just saying like, Hey, I totally understand where you're coming from. Like when I told you, Hey, I want to make sure uh, we get a good deal. You know, the market you hear, I'm hearing these things in the market, just saying, Hey, just repeating that. Hey, so you're hearing a lot of stuff in the market. I understand where you're coming from. You know, that makes sense. A lot of clients have these concerns, you know, but here's what we're going to do to, to overcome that. Right. Or here's where we see the opportunity at. So just stopping, I think that's the big part is right. A lot of times we don't normally repeat and approve in our everyday dialogue. Right. But repeating and approving is extremely important in the sales atmosphere, right? So let me role play that with you one more time, uh, Julia, just that part. I want you to repeat it to me. And then I want you to like, let me know you understand me and, you know, a, a, basically repeat and approve. Yeah, so Julia, um, yeah, honestly, we're, you know, we just wanna make sure we get a good deal right now. We're hearing all this stuff in the news and it sounds like there may be some opportunity right now to get a good deal you know, and, and just making sure we find the right home. Like that's really important to us. Of course, I completely understand. And a lot of people right now, you know, during this um, time in our economy are a little bit concerned where the market's going. And I that's why I completely understand your concern. However, this is actually a really friendly market for many buyers. And this is probably one of the best times to get a good deal. A lot of properties are appraising for much more. So you get instant equity and in general, you can get more, uh, more for what you put in. And I can go over that in more detail during our consultation. Okay. Stop right there. Good. Good. So just practice on, um, yeah, your answer was great, but the only part is repeating what I just said, right? Oh yeah. Um, I was like verbatim. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, like before we did the role play, but I didn't. And when you say repeat that you mean literally like, just like repeating exactly what you said. That's what I was. Yeah, just, just repeat it back to me. 
repeat it back to me so that you're acknowledging that you heard me, right? So, okay. So let's practice this real quick, right? I'm just gonna throw some stuff at you. So, and I want you just to repeat it and then tell me, no, I totally understand, or I get it. And by you approving it, that's you, that's you telling me that you understand me, or I get it, or I understand your concern. Right. So Julia, like it's, it's really cold today. Yeah, it is very cold today. I completely under, I completely understand. I do. You, well, I'm so confused. Like you mean like literally repeat for word for word, what you said. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I could role play it with, let, let, let's role play it Enrique so she could hear it kind of, yeah. I, I think I got a little bit about what you said, Julia. And basically that is what it is. You're repeating what the client is saying. So they know, and then you approve it. So what does that mean is you're listening. So Enrique, if I'm hearing you right, it sounds like you're looking for a great deal. You're hearing a lot of things on the news that's going on. And I hear you. A lot of my friends are telling me the same thing. And it sounds like the most important is having the right opportunity and getting that right home. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So you're right? just kind of, you're kind of repeating the concerns, the wants or what they're wanting, and then you approve. Okay, and, and that was so much. <laughs> but you did it right when he said it's yeah. cold. You did yeah. it right on the dot. It, yeah, you're right. It is cold. <laughs> I think typically, like I always like approve instead of repeat and then approve. That was my issue. Like, so that's good. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You were approving already, but now we got to add the repeat part because the repeat part, here's what it does. It does two things. It lets me know that you heard what I said and it makes sure there's no miscommunication, right? Like we're on the same page because sometimes I may say something and then you repeat it back to me like, no, that's not what I meant. What I meant was this, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to, we're clarifying that this is what my concern is. And then what it also does is it allows you time to think of the next thing you're gonna say, right? Mm -hmm. So it gives you a pause in the conversation so that your brain can catch up and make sure you say the next thing correctly, right? And properly. So the mm -hmm. repeat and approve is very powerful in establishing rapport and allowing you to, to control the flow of the conversation. So mm -hmm. literally just repeat it back to me and then just acknowledge it, right? And then say, but, or here's what we're gonna do or here's how we're going to address that, right? Yeah. So let's try that one more time, yeah. right? So Julia, so Julia, yeah, I, um, you know, I'll, we just want to make sure we get a good deal right now. You know, it seems like there's some opportunity, you know, I've heard in the news that, you know, there may be an opportunity to get a good, a good deal on a property and um, making sure we find the right home, you know, is, is important. Yes, Enrique, I completely hear you. You you want to get a good deal and you're hearing on the news that you know right now is a good time to get that deal completely understand and in fact it is probably one of the best times for buyers to step in um i'll go in more detail during our consultation um, yeah i just want to do a quick answer <laughs> yeah there you go so yeah so you you basically repeated it back to me you actually did a little approval first so you got to just try to work on that right mm -hmm. I think it's just naturally the way you talk, but yeah, you kind of semi approved it and then you repeated it. Right. Yeah. So just, just keep in your mind that when someone, when someone spills their beans to you, think of this, right. I'm going to leave you guys with this because we've got to wrap up. When I just spill my beans to you, right. I spill my heart out to you, you being able to repeat it back, back to me and say like, this is what I said. And you hear me and you acknowledge me and you understand me that like really solidifies the, the relationship because it lets me know you're listening, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with like an objection. If I say like, hey, this is my concern, this is my objection, you just saying, hey, this is what you said. You said this and you said this. I totally get it. I totally understand. I totally hear you. We're on the same page, right? It creates a rapport with the client. It puts their guard down. And it lets them know you're listening. And now you can say, okay, but this is how we're going to address that. This is what our next will be to, to alleviate that, right? It's a very, very powerful tactic. And you just got to get used to doing this in your, in your conversations. All right, guys. So that's all we got, guys. We're up on time. Um, let's give it up one more time for 
Connie, for Julia, for participating, for Liliana participating in the beginning, um, for the contributions from everybody else on the team too, you guys that are chiming in and giving some of your feedback and stuff. And everybody who's out there listening, I hope you guys really got something out of today. Um, remember, a lot of us, like we know the basics, right? We know the basics of what to say. Like we know the scripts, we, we pretty much got the gist of it, but it's these little things that you tweak these fine tuning, that's what gets you to go to get better, right? In the beginning, when you're first starting and you have no experience, like, yeah, getting you from like a level one to a level five, like you can jump up quick, right? Because like, you just got to memorize the scripts and stuff like that. And all of a sudden you kind of know the basics, but when you're like at a level seven and you're trying to get to a level 10, it's little fine tuning that you got to do. It's these little techniques, this little fine tuning that you got to do to your, to your scripts and your dialogue. And that, that gets you one step closer, one step closer, right? So remember, you guys committing to this every week, you're going to take these things and go out and start using them. And you're going to see these little incremental uh, changes, right? It's getting that 1% better every single day. So take what you learned today, guys, go apply it. And I promise you over time, you're going to see like your sales and your conversion really go to the next level. So I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Let me know if you need anything. See you next week. All right. Later. See you.